So today's video is just going to be a quick one on how to scuff your original controller for your Xbox One or if you already have a scuff controller that's faulty and you want to fix it basically. Um, so for this video you're going to need a soldering iron with some solder. Um, you're going to need your torque security bit screwdriver set to take the controller apart. You're going to need a pair of snips to cut your wire. You're going to need a little bit of low gauge cable. Um, I've gone for red for positive, it just makes it easy, and then of course black for negative. Um, if you're doing your existing controller, um, you're going to have your old battery cover. Um, what you can do is you pop that in there, two bits of plastic, cut them straight down there, one there, one there. Um, and then what they can do is click the little buttons, the same as how a normal scuff would work. So you're basically looking to replicate their plate. Um, it can be very easily done. Um, I've already got a scuff, so I'm just going to reuse the back plate that they have with it on a new controller, and I'm going to put the buttons in myself. Um, any other thing you're going to need is a set of push momentary tack switches. So I tend to use the smaller blue one. And Last of all, you're going to need a multimeter. Um, they come in pretty handy. You can test your cable and test various solder points on the controllers to make sure you're getting the right output that you actually need. Um, just a side note, one of the other things you're going to need to do is on your controller, you're going to need to check your model. So um, just in there on the top right hand corner, you probably can't read that on the focus, but I've got a model 1708. Um, if you do a little Google search on whatever model you have and find the pinouts for your A and B or whatever buttons you want to map, so you can use the D-pad, um, you could even map things like the back button, start button, etc. You can do bumpers. The only things that you can't map, of course, are your thumbsticks. So what you will want to do is break your controller down to the bare PCB and just the front outer housing. Um, what you're going to need to do next is actually take this board off so you can get to the board that's underneath this as uh, they hold the pinouts for your buttons on the front of your controller. Um, but what you will need to do is, like I said in step one, um, locate the model of your controller. Um, for instance, I might have a 1708. Um, one Google search will find the schematics for your button mappings for your specific model of controller that will be helpful to what you're doing. Um, for instance, for myself, I'm going to map A and B. So for A, I'm going to need TP21, which is just under this board. Um, bear with me if I break this board off. So once you've separated PCB A from PCB B, um, what I will need to do is find the pinout for A. So TP21, which is located just underneath the battery terminal right there. Um, you won't be able to see on this camera, so I'll show a picture covered up now. So I've just tinned the end of my lead. All I'm going to do is just pop it onto TP21 and solder that down. Just like that, I've got my solid connection soldered to the board. What we're going to want to do is follow the same principle as we did last time. So you want to tin the end of your cable on your negative end and then on the flip side of the thumbstick PCB we're going to be looking for R29 which is the pinout for B um, it is in between TP7 and TP26 it is a small tiny contact on the board with a resistor on it and you do not want to knock that resistor off the board So one extra thing I will say at this step is a brilliant way to stop your solder points from snapping. As you can see, they are very small and very fragile. As if you do have a hot glue gun, if you want to pop a little bit of glue just on top of the solder points and at various points along the cable routing so it doesn't get snagged or come unsoldered as you're reassembling your controller, um, you will also need the hot glue gun at the next step in the video. So it's only a little drop of glue, nothing too much. Um, you don't want to go crazy as you've still got to reassemble these parts. So once you've given the hot glue enough time to dry, what you want to do is reassemble part A to part B again and make sure they're nice and clicked together. And your little cable here for your aerial, you just want to pop that back on and make sure it's firmly connected. 
your two cables that you've soldered previously what you want to begin to do is mount them in a fashion like that along the board nice and neatly so you can clip the controller back together after and it's not going to interfere with any other screws or solder points or connectors for the controller that's going on So once you're at this stage and you've got your cable soldered to the board and they're all tacked along nicely, just coming off and away, we want to put this part aside and we want to begin to drill your holes in your back plate for your controller. For myself, as I mentioned previously, I am going to use the scuff paddles that I already have for my broken or slash faulty scuff controller. Um, but if you are using your original battery plate, as you can see, all you're basically going to be doing is replicating making two plastic paddles that just screw into the back and come down. And all this is going to allow you to do is take a push momentary tack switch, as you can see just here, once there is a hole drilled in here. So as you can see, I've now drilled two smaller holes in the back of the controller. And what I did just before this is I pop the back of my controller on once you've got your paddles and everything made um, and just on the back bits there these have small little standoffs as you can see just there what I did is I popped two smaller marks just on the back of this housing so I could see where they touch the board and all I've done is drilled straight through so when they're both there you click one paddle you can see it activates the little bumper there and all I'm going to want to do now is take a Stanley blade and just around the smaller hole here, you're just going to want to scuff it up. So once you've got a nice scratched up area just around the little holes on the inside, you're going to want to take your little button and pop it in there and just make sure that it goes through the hole but it's not too big and you can see it just on the back side so that is right there all I'm going to want to do is just take that pop it into my hole and then tack it down with a little bit of hot glue so I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue just around the outside Um, but all I'm doing is just keeping the pressure down on the button and then the hot glue set. Once you've allowed your small little bit of hot glue to dry, all you want to do is flip your controller over and just make sure that the button is nice and central in the hole. You don't want it touching either side of it as this over time will just wear the button down even further to the point where it's not clicking or it's missing clicks. Um, therefore, when you do click the button, it might not activate your A button or your B button. So once you've verified that it is all tacked down, all you want to do is just pop a little bit more glue around that side, around that side and around the top. So as you can see, whilst I was waiting for the hot glue to set and bond the A button to the controller, I've popped in my B button and I've put a little bit of glue around there and allowed that to dry. I've just checked the actual controller and made sure they're nice and aligned. So when I pop my back housing bit on, when I click the buttons, you can both hear and click in a way nicely there. But what you're going to want to do before you attempt to do any of this is let the controller sit for about 10 minutes and let the hot glue you've put on properly harden and cure otherwise when you click the button you'll push the button straight off um, and you'll have to start from the beginning again so once you're happy with your buttons and your paddles and you've checked that they are clicking the next part you want to grab the old part of the controller we did earlier and what you'll notice is they have two cables coming off of it 
and um, these are connected to the solder points that we talked about earlier on for your a and b so i know for instance my red cable is for a and my black one is attached to b so these are only the feeds to our buttons we still need to ground these which i will show you in just a moment so once you've stripped and tinned your cables coming off of your controller you can now begin to solder them to the correct buttons on the back so what i tend to like to do is for instance for myself i'm going to use a and b so a is always before b is so for instance on there you see a is here and b is here so your buttons here that's going to be a and that one's going to be b it's entirely up to you whatever you want to map your buttons to you can go ahead and do that so first things what we're going to do is grab our multimeter and you're going to want to put it on polarity mode so we can test when it's a straight ground to ground and all i'm going to do is on the legs of this button is just ground that one out and ground that one out so that oh, so that when i push the button you can see just there on my meter, I get an audible beep and I also get an ohm read. Um, so I can see that's broken circuit, completed circuit. So I know it's my two outer pins diagonally across here and here, or I can go from here to here and that's how I'll activate the circuit. Same for this one, I'd imagine. If I go for that pin there and that pin there, you can see I don't get a no audible beep and I get no reading. When I click the button, you can see I get a reading and I get an audible beep that the circuit is completed. So I know both of my outer pins on my button, so that one and that one are directly connected. And again, that one and that one are connected. For myself, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go diagonally across each button. So same on that one and so forth on that one, them two pins are gonna be used. So once you've found the polarity of your buttons, all we're gonna do is just pop your positive from your A onto whatever side you'd like to use it to and then just literally solder that to there. So what we're going to do is bring this contact over here, same again, I'm just going to bend it up, I'm going to wrap it around the leg of the button, Same process again, I'm just going to drop a little bit of solder straight onto the leg of the button and just ensure that that contact can't come off. Just like that, I've got B soldered onto the connect on the pole of the button and then I've got A on the connect post of that button. So you're going to want to grab yourself another piece of cable. I'm going to go with black for ground in my case. And on this pole of the leg just here. So we've got our main cable linking in. And as I showed you before in the multimeter, we're going to want to wrap this one just around that leg. And just drop a little bit of solder onto the contact again. Just ensuring that it's not going to come off. Now we stripped and tinned the end of our cable, same process again, we're just going to wrap it around the end of this post.
So once you've cut and tinned your cable, you're going to want to follow the same again. Pop it onto that leg of the circuit and just twist it around. a little bit of solder just onto that leg to make sure there's good contact and those aren't going to come off anywhere. There we go, just like that. What I'm going to do is just let that dry. Just give it a little tug, make sure it's not coming off, that's not coming off. And then the cable we attached underneath, that's also not coming off. So what this is going to allow us to do is I can move that out of the way quickly. There we go. So we have our circuit coming here for A. So that's our lead from the main controller. So that's going onto the top leg. And then we have a black lead just coming off. As you can see, it's just coming down here. And it's just attaching to the other side of the leg on this switch. And then we have the red cable that we just soldered back on. And that one we are going to solder back to our main controller. And what this little bit in the middle just allows us to do is it cuts out the need of us soldering two cables back to the controller. We already have two here, and there's our third one. We don't need any more, as it's just going to get really messy and really complicated. So this little jumper in the middle just allows us to jump the ground from that one to that one. So once I've stripped and tinned the end of this cable, what we're going to want to do with this one, that's just coming off the end of our switch, is just inside, just here, you'll find the motor cables that are doing your rumbles. So you'll see the positive cable, and then you'll also see the black cable. I'll throw a picture up on the screen. So you can see what we're going to want to do is take this cable here that we've just stripped and tinned and we're going to want to attach it to the black negative connection on that and what that will do is give us a complete ground for the controller to return all the way back to so all I'm doing is just grabbing the one I've just stripped and tinned and I'm just going to solder it down to that pad And as you can see, that's now attached and soldered to the board. All I'm going to do is just pop a little bit of solder on top of that just to make sure I've got a nice stable connection. There we go. I'm just going to allow that to dry. And all I'm going to do is pop a little bit of hot glue just on top of that to make sure that that connection isn't able to come off the board either. So I'm just going to grab my hot glue gun once that's dried. And I'm just going to pop a tiny bit just on top of that to make sure it doesn't come away. There we go. Just like that. So once we finish that, we're just going to want to flip that back over. And then all we're going to want to do is the remaining poles left on these switches, we're going to want to bend down out of the way so they aren't able to contact and interfere with the circuit board underneath and bridge anything in there, causing any other issues we may face. Now we're at this point, I just want to ensure that your buttons still click. I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do is just tuck these cables out of the way so they don't interfere with any parts when we assemble this shell back together. So we want to take the ground, we want to take that out of the way. We want to grab all of these cables and just basically bundle them all up so they're not touching anything and they're out of the way. So once you have all your cables up and out of the way and you've bent all the legs down on your poles to your switches, 
you're going to want to grab your hot gun, hot glue gun again, sorry. And you're going to want to put a little bit around the switches just to make sure that these poles are covered up and they can't bridge or contact to any other metal part of the controller. And this also just ensures that one, the button doesn't go anywhere, and two, that the connections are nice and firm, and three, they're not touching anything else inside of your controller. So once you've allowed for your glue to dry, just give the button a little click to ensure that they still work and they're still clicking very nicely. So what I'm going to want to do is just do the same process but just on these sides here so we can ensure that the button's nice and held in from this side and it's nice and secured from this side. You can do this all at once but I find that too much glue will melt the existing glue on the button and then you'll just become into a massive shambles and it's not fun. So you're just going to want to ensure throughout this process that the buttons are held down and you don't want them to move or wriggle out of where you've secured them in the first place. So once we've secured all of our various pieces to the board and we've ensured that the buttons are nice and secured and they're not going to go anywhere, just go around and remove the remainders of the little pieces of hot glue that I've just dried. Um, you don't want to leave too much inside the controller as so it can gunk up other parts and it's just unnecessary. Once you're happy with the back of your controller, you can begin to reassemble this main part to the back side of the shell. One thing to ensure whilst you're doing this is that your cables are all together and out of the way and you're not putting too much tension or stress on any of the joints or connections. So what I will do is just pop this back together. So once you have your controller basically half back together, all you're going to want to do is just ensure that all your buttons are nice and clickable. Your triggers both work. Ensure that you've poked both the battery terminals back through the case when you slid it back on. And that there's no loose cables hanging out of the controller anywhere. As you can see, it all looks very nice. So all we're going to do is grab our front piece and just pop that back onto the controller. Ensuring that it all clicks down very nice. And start replacing the screws here, here, here here and here from where we took them out from. So once you've ensured all your screws are back together and your case is all clipped back together, what you can then begin to do is snap the side pieces just back on. So that is that side. There's literally click straight back on. And we pop that side back on. And what we can also do is pop our battery pack back on. And then we'll click it. We should get an audible click. That one's perfect. That one's also perfect. And then what we can do is we connect our controller back to our Xbox. If you'd like to follow me in the next step, you can just verify that both of our buttons are clicking whilst they should be. So once you've popped your controller back together, and you've put some batteries in it, or you've reconnected it via the USB, make sure it's synced and that your little logo is lit up. Head over to your Xbox and you want to search your store for Xbox accessories. So what is just on the screen, as you can see, should be literally just listed over here. And then you want to launch that. What this will enable you to do is, is if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see the little picture of the test lab kit. If you scroll down and click onto that, what this then allows you to do is to click any button on the controller and test to see if it has worked. So as you can see, I'm clicking A, B, X, Y, various other buttons. You can see I can use all of the sticks, bumpers, triggers. Um, but what we want to do is just test whether when I push the button on the back, does it correspond to a button being pressed on the controller that we've mapped it to. So I'm going to go ahead and click A. As we can see, A is showing up as I click it, hold it down. That's working perfectly. Now let's try B. As you can see, when I'm clicking it and holding it down, it's showing that it's being pressed. And again on the front, 
A and B. On the back, A, B, working perfectly. I would say that's a job well done. If you'd like to give the video a like, subscribe. There'll be more future content like this. Thank you very much.